Why understanding the TMJ is important in tooth repair. As a dentist, your main focus is on the teeth, right? So why should you complicate things by bringing in the TMJ? If you have a door that isn't closing properly, and you find a hinge that looks like this, would you start shaving off the outside edge of the door to get it to close properly? Of course not. With a hinge like this, it makes no sense to make any changes to the door until you've repaired the side jam of the frame so that the hinge has a stable base. Why then would you ever make changes to teeth when you don't know the state of the jaw joint? Here you see a joint with a displaced disc, so the condyle is wearing away over time. If the condyle or joint is deteriorating, the way the teeth contact is changing. If the change is slow, the teeth and bones may adapt. If the change is fast, there's no time for adaption, so teeth will clearly not contact as they used to. In case you think this isn't the case with your patients, you should note that studies show that a high proportion of teenagers have displaced discs. Here is Dr. Elaine Aube, a dentist, TMJ specialist, and president of the Canadian Occlusion Institute, talking about one of those studies. A guy called Brian Nebbe from University of Alberta published in 2000, and this is the first study done on MRI to confirm the position of the disc in a, in a population. And they organized a research pro protocol where they took a, a good number of young adolescents, aged, if I remember correctly, 13 to 15, and what they found was totally astonishing. If you look at the boys' side, the left TMJ only has 40% of its discs in place. 60% are actually out of place. Girls is even worse. You got 72.5 out of place in the left and on the right, 76.9% that are out of place. If you combine those two numbers, that brings the number up to 94% of girls at age 15 have actually at least one displaced disc. Here are comments from four widely respected experts in the field. Dr. Orbe, who we just heard from, Dr. McDonald, an orthodontist, Dr. Lee, a comprehensive dentist, and Dr. Piper, world-renowned TMJ surgeon. We'll start with Dr. Drew McDonald talking about a young patient of his. During the COVID shutdown, after she had already started her treatment, she did fall off her bike and had to have stitches. She had a pretty bad facial uh, injury. And essentially, you know, you'll see the effects here. So this picture is from January of 2020, prior to her fall. She came in in May with this on her left condyle. She had fallen down. And the only reason I knew about this is I saw the stitches on her face and said, hey, tell me what happened here. That Are you okay? You know, any issues? And she goes, yeah, I fell off my bike. And oh, by the way, I couldn't open my jaw for about two weeks, but it went away. So I figured it was fine. And again, parents thought it was fine too. Well, here's what's not fine is that with that condylar fracture there, we also had a disc displacement. You can see the red disc that is displaced laterally as a result of that fall, leaving now the medial pole uncovered. So do I wanna do typical orthodontic things on this joint now? Absolutely not. I need to see and understand that this is a limiting factor. Now, Dr. Orbe introducing a 28 year old patient. This young lady is a young dentist. Now, she, she called me up uh, just a few weeks ago, not knowing what was going on in her jaw because she started having pain. And uh, she said, she said, Elaine, I've been having pain in my left joint and I don't know what's going on. We know now how to diagnose a TNJ and that should be done. If you look, at her left joint. I mean, where's the joint? Where's the condyle? There's no condyle left. She's 28 years old. On the right side, you still have a little bit of a condyle, but it's slower than the coronoid process. On the left side, if you come back here, it's like way underneath the coronoid process. Actually, you don't have a condyle anymore. You only have a small, short, stubby neck. And she says, well, I got my whole dental history. Well, that's a great, bring it. So this is her at 10 years old. Dr. Orbe goes into more detail. I'm just going to show you snapshots at different times. Notice that things look reasonable immediately after orthodontics, but seem to revert over time. 
as Dr. Albee says. But still, we have to realize that the foundation was still very iffy. The final two sets of snapshots, ending with things looking good, but the patient is beginning to experience pain in her jaw. Unfortunately, that symptom has come years after the damage started. Here's world-renowned TMJ surgeon, Dr. Mark Piper, talking about signs of loss of dimension in the joint. So the clinical insight is that you're always going to have a change in the static occlusion with any dimensional change in the joint foundation. Now in the occlusion, we might be thinking in terms of microns, but in the temporal mandibular joint foundation, we can use, we can lose millimeters of vertical dimension between soft tissue and bone. Here's a patient with chronic degeneration of her right temporal mandibular joint. She's bone on bone contact. Uh, she's premature in the right posterior and uncoupling her front bite. Very, very similar uh, to what we showed you in the, in, the, in the prior video. So posterior dental prematurities, anterior open bites, class two occlusal and skeletal shifting are signs of a joint-based dimensional loss, okay? And if we look at MIP, that is not the diagnostic position. When you look at the difference between fully seated and MIP occlusion, the patient can shift their TMJ foundation to maximally intercuspate and you won't see the defect uh, that's present in the fully seated posture. Finally, a comment from Dr. Michelle Lee, comprehensive dentist and part of the Pankey Institute faculty. So this patient is showing up with joint popping and clicking. There's airway sleep disturbances. Um, she's getting hair, headaches. There's obvious parafunction. Her teeth are sensitive. Muscles are sore and she has myofascial pain. Addressing the, 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 the joint popping and not only is she popping, but she's hurting, right? So we definitely want to understand where this or the etiology is coming from before we just go ahead and do the dentistry. These top dentists know that if they want their restorations to last, they must be building on a firm, stable foundation. So if I can wrap this whole video up in one sentence, it would be, make sure you know the health of the patient's jaw joints before you make changes to their teeth. If you'd like to keep learning with animations like the ones you saw in this video, then we'd suggest using our study aid in conjunction with Dr. Dawson's definitive book, Functional Occlusion from TMJ to Smile Design. The animations walk side by side each chapter to give you the best visual and content-rich learning experience to take you to a solid understanding of the TMJ and occlusion. The book is available through Amazon or through Dr. Dawson's publishing company, Widium, and the study aid is available through us. I put the links in the description below.